Good morning to one and all, and it's a pleasure to be with you today again to go into what is one of the most interesting topic. Today, we thank you for joining us again, and we just want to ask you that you will continue to like and share the page and let people know that we are here again uh, to go into the Word of God and to have a wonderful discussion. With me today, I have two wonderful gentlemen that will sit with me as we discuss what is an amazing topic the protestant reformation characters and contribution and today we want you to uh, pay a part or uh, pay a part with us as we seek to discuss this wonderful topic as we go back in history to get some very important principle especially in relation to the reformation uh, as we look to move forward in jesus name and so as we start this morning i want you to bow your heads right with me as we ask God's presence to be with us. Father, we thank you so much for another wonderful opportunity whereby we can come together as men of God to discuss your word to your people. Lord, we just pray that everything will go smoothly and lives will be touched, life will be transformed, even as we lift up your name today. We bless you and we thank you again in Jesus' name. This morning, before we go into our discussion, I just want to take this moment to introduce with me those uh, wonderful, wonderful individual, individual that will sit with me as we discuss, we discuss an amazing topic. topic. I just wanted to introduce themselves as we go right into this discussion. Pleasant good morning, good morning to everyone. I am Bonnet Lyons, Lyons and it is a pleasure to be here with, with you today as we indeed go into a topic that, that is relevant and applicable even in these times. Amen. Amen. Uh, good, good morning, morning to, to everyone, everyone on Facebook, Facebook and YouTube. YouTube. My, My name is Pastor Jesus Charles. Charles. I'm a pastor of the South Central, Central District. District. Yes, yes, and this, this morning, morning we have a very, very exciting topic. topic. Indeed, Indeed we are very relevant. relevant. And, and, and we, we hope, hope that you all will um, enjoy and benefit from the topic that, that will be shared this morning. morning. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you so much, much gentlemen, and, and I just, just want to say thank you for being here with us today. today. Actually, as I started out by saying, we are looking at the Protestant, Protestant Reformation characters and, and contribution, and I want to go straight into the discussion this morning. morning. I want to ask the question, uh, can you kindly explain what was the basis and the circumstances that bring about the Protestant Reformation? All right, for me, when you think of the Reformation, there, there is, is one, one name, name that, that stands resolute, and that, that is Martin Luther. Oh, yes. And uh, he should say that, that Martin Luther was a monk, and, and uh, it was his desire mm -hmm. to live righteously, to live holy, to live a straight life. But then Martin Luther, he was also a man of deep study, a scholar, if you please. Yes. And... Uh, Based on the information that I have here, he joined the Augustinian order. But we look further into his life. Mm -hmm. And Martin Luther says, if ever a monk got to heaven by monkery, mm -hmm. I would have gotten there. So that just goes to show the kind of seriousness yeah, yeah, yeah. that he would have placed within his role and responsibility as a monk. Mm -hmm. But then he came to the realization that it can't just be by works. There must be something more involved in the picture. And I on. believe that was the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit working in the process to bring about the change that was necessary in that period to even affect us today. And mm -hmm. so... Can we say long story short, yeah, Martin Luther yeah. came to the point the just shall live by faith. It's not about works, but it is about faith. Contrary to what the church he was part of was teaching. I am so happy that yes. you say that, Pastor, because as we continue our discussion, we would go more into depth with that particular statement that the just shall live by faith. But Pastor Charles, I see that you are eager to continue the discussion, the question that was asked. What really triggered the Reformation? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, just to add to Pastor Lyons, indeed, um, the Reformation, when we think about the Protestant Reformation, we think about Martin Luther. And we know that Martin Luther, indeed, he stands for what is right, mm -hmm. for principle. And 
what causes the uh, Protestant Reformation. Um, let me see that um, back then um, there were corruption um, in the church. There were corruption. There were growth in wealth. Um, the the there were corruption. Um, the doctrines they had a, the different beliefs in in doctrines. Um, also the selling of indulgences in 1517, which were which were being used to fund the rebuilding of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, or that church was granted um, special privileges by the Pope. Mm -hmm. um, money generating practices in the Roman Catholic Church, such as the sale of indulgences, um, the demands for reform by Martin Luther, uh, John Calvin, um, Holgit, Swingley, and other scholars in Europe. Um, we I have here the desire of many people to read the Bible in language they spoke at home rather than in Latin. The desire of many people to rely only on the Bible for religious guidance and not on tradition or current teachings. The belief that forgiveness comes only from God rather than from a combination of faith and good works. And I can say more and more. Thank you so much, Pastor Charles, for this um, very in-depth information and answering the question, ladies and gentlemen, those who are viewing, we are seeing that here is a system that was practicing things that was against the Bible and here is an individual that decided that he would have stand for what is right and pastor allotted to it by giving us just a, a, a clip it of what he, he stood for where he, got, where he was convicted by the simple passage that the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. So here is a man, humble, and wanted to do what is right, stood up against a system that was going against what was wrong. Mm -hmm. But this, this morning, we're going to continue the journey. And, and at this moment, I just want us uh, to share the contribution of the following persons towards the Reformation. And we have Martin Luther, John Calvin, Zung, Zungwick, and John Knox. I, and I want the pastors to, to choose one of the individuals you want to share with our audience today of their contributions. Well, um, I will start off with Martin Luther. Okay. Um, we, we know that Martin Luther, he was a German monk, right, and a professor of theology at the University of Wittenberg. And he sparked the Reformation in 1517 by posting, at least according to tradition, his 95 theses on the door of the Castle Church mm -hmm. in Wittenberg, Germany. Mm -hmm. And these theses were a list of statements that express Luther's concerns about certain practices. So Martin Luther was concerned about the practices back then, yes? The different beliefs. And so he, he, he nailed or he, his 95 theses on the door of the Catholic Church in, in um, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, also, the, the sale of indulgences. Um, he was concerned about the sale of indulgences whereby uh, people will pay to receive forgiveness um, for the sins, yes? Thank you so much. And, and, and as we continue, once again, we are seeing that Martin Luther was a very educated individual, but he, he used his education to do what is right. And, and this is one of the things I want to emphasize to young people who are educated. You may have your degrees and your PhDs. Please use it for the glory of God hmm. so that his name can be glorified. Pastor, who do who, who you want to share with us this morning? Uh, there is an interesting name here. Swingly, mm -hmm. Ulrich Swingly. Yeah. I like that name. I can't pronounce it, but <laughs> yeah. I like it. <laughs> and uh, he made his contributions in reference to the Swiss Reformation. And like Martin Luther, history says that he accepted the supreme authority of Scripture. Wow. But it also says that he would have implemented it in a more rigorous and comprehensive way to all doctrines and practices. Mm -hmm. So what we can also underscore is that while these men were part of the Reformation process, the reality is that not everything that they did would have been what we may say kosher. Yeah. Sometimes there could have been a little bit of imbalance, mm -hmm. but the principle of change and fighting against a system of what Pastor Charles considers as corruption was what we can bring out from our discussion this morning to recognize that truth 
must always prevail. And anything that goes contrary to the word of God, as was seen in the life and practices of Martin Luther, hmm. his discovery mm -hmm. should be placed aside. And the word of God must always be exalted. And, and even as, as Pastor made this very profound statement and point, I just want to let the audience know that from these two individuals, Martin Luther and Zwingli, we are seeing solar scripture mm -hmm. being yeah. stood out. Only scripture. And we as a people should base our beliefs and practice on what the Bible says Amen. and not what tradition says. Okay. Pastor, do you want to add uh, to or do you want to share the contribution of John Knox or John. maybe Calvin? Yes, well, John Calvin. Mm -hmm. uh, we know John Calvin as well. He stood for... Um, for um, for what is right and um, for truth, and John Calvin, he he Calvin's numerous written works include theological treatises, biblical commentaries, um, sermons and letters, liturgy and catechism for the Reformed Church. Mm. Um, he he spread um, the gospel in throughout Scotland, France, um, and other countries. Yes, so, so Martin Luther, he, he, he spread the truth and he was uh, um, greatly a part of the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. Oh, wonderful. And of course, John Knox, mm -hmm. he was in reference to, should we say, the Scottish Reformation. So one of the foremost leaders in the Scottish Ref Reformation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can say, he shaped the democratic form of government it adopted. So it is not just about the religious arm, but we can see that there was influence even in the government system. Yeah, so we have yeah. the ecclesiastical power, and then we have the, the government coming into play, and the church, the influence of God's word, men inspired by God, being able to be forces of good, mm -hmm. even in the presence of evil. Now, that is powerful. Oh, yes. Very true. And just so Pastor, I'd yes. Um, but, uh, Pastor, yes, you can go, Pastor Charles. Um, John Knox, um, his preaching alone was used by God, yes, to spread the gospel in um, choice Scotland. Yes, and, and we see here, John Knox, he, he was not afraid to stand up um, before kings and queens. Yes, he stood for principle, right? And... As, as Christians, we need to stand for God and stand for principle. Definitely. And oh, Pastor, yes, yes, Pastor Lyons. While I was reading, I came across the foundational principles of the Reformation. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has significance to Martin Luther. And uh, here we have, for example, Sola Scriptura. Yes. That it is the Bible alone, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. church traditions. Mm -hmm that becomes law, it is the word of God. Yeah, yeah. Principles of sola scriptura allows a framework whereby God's thoughts and purposes can be received on mix hmm. with human theories and worldviews. We have sola, how you call that? Gratia. Gratia, if you please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Grace alone for salvation, not grace with come on, merits. Come on now. And that's come where on. we come back to indulgences. Mm -hmm. Then we also have Sola fidei, yeah. not faith with, with works. Come then we on. have solus Christos. And it says, that is in my flesh nothing good dwells. Mm. For the will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. Yeah. So it is in Christ hmm. as the only one who can offer eternal life and effect change. So Lord. it can be from within me. All and we have God. solely the Gloria, mm -hmm. if you please. Mm -hmm. Only God is worthy to be worshipped and prayed to. Wonderful. And of course, there are several more that comes from the, the principles of the Reformation that we wouldn't go through at yeah, this time. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I just love the idea, Pastor, that mm -hmm. you just brought up and shared not just with myself and pastor, but with the audience of the importance of scripture, mm -hmm. grace, and faith. These three bi 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 biblical principles uh, would stir up certain things in people that would make them want to leave for Christ. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing here is that the Reformation really stemmed from the Bible mm -hmm. or principles from the Bible. 
And so if we want a reformed life, what we are asking you, audience, is just find yourself back in the Word of God. Take out the scriptures or the Bible, wherever you've been hiding it, and let us go back and study the Word of God. Because when we do study the Word of God, things happen. And so this morning, I just want to thank those persons who have been sharing good morning and where you're from and even making your comments. I'm seeing one comment says that Martin Luther believed that a salvation was a gift from God, and which is very true because we cannot experience salvation outside of God. It all have to do with God and God only. And so we are so grateful for the Reformation and the principles that is underlined within the Reformation. I want to ask this question as we move on. Now, number three question asks, there are many quotes from Martin Luther that has become famous. Some of these include such as blood alone, move the wheels of history, uh -huh. peace, if possible, truth at all costs. And the final one, I cannot and will not recant anything. For to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand, I can do no other. So help me God. Okay. Amen. So here's the question. Can you please comment on these statements, especially and sharing the circumstances of the latter? Okay. Blood. Mm -hmm. That is a word that we often hear so many times, even in the French anthem. It is so graphic yeah, yeah. from my perspective. And I know that the French played a significant role in the Reformation process also. So hear me now. Blood, what fighting for? Anything worth fighting for is what, should we say, dying for. Hmm. So that should be it. So mm -hmm. in other words, if there is something that you are willing to live for, you must also be willing to, to die for it. And you often hear about blood, sweat, and tears, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. suggests that there must be some kind of discipline and there must be a form of, should we say, sticking to it. Yeah, yeah, Don't yeah. give up. Not letting go. Being persistent. Persevering under all odds. So mm. in that context, I see that statement rising for us to recognize that we must be willing to die for what we believe. And even history says that there were men and we women, even Stephen, yeah, yeah. the Bible, he was mm. stoned to death, mm. given a chance to recant. Yeah. But he could not have because within him there was a power greater. His belief was greater than the influence of those around him, True. and he was willing to die for what he believed. And today, we must be willing to do the same thing when we are called upon to do so. Exactly, exactly. Pastor, you want just, to share? And just to add, I, I love this part here. I cannot and will not be can't anything. For to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. I believe here that Mart, uh, Martin Luther, that his conscience was bound by the word of God. Yes, um, Martin Luther, yes, he, he, ha he had his strong belief in God. He believed in God. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so we know that he, he wrote his 95 Thesis. Yes, and, and Martin Luther believed that what he wrote, that it is, it is um, from God or by God. Yes, and so Martin Luther, he will not recant or he will not change his mind. Yes, yeah. he stands for what he believed. And so um, it's very important, it's, it's critical that we stand for what we believe. We believe in God, um, we believe in, in his word, in the doctrines of Christ. We stand for what we believe. And we see that the Apostle Paul, Peter, Silas, these guys, they were, put, they were persecuted um, for the truth, yeah. yes? But, but we see here Martin Luther, he said that he will not recant, yes? Um, but he will stand for God. Stand for God. Mm -hmm. and can, can I just ask a mm -hmm. question, even to Pastor Lyons? What was the circumstances that made Martin Luther make the statement? Okay. It sounds like the Diet of Worms. Okay. Wherein Martin Luther was called into question. And of course, because it was church, if you understand how the church operates, when you have a teaching or you have a doctrine that mm -hmm. goes contrary to the mainline system, you would naturally be called in 
and be questioned concerning your new belief. And so Martin Luther was called into question to defend mm. his new position based on what he would have studied and he would have discovered. And so it was in those moments then, if you understand the influence of the church and you understand the influence of words, yeah. you would know that yeah. if left unchecked, hmm. the power of Martin Luther, his words would have disseminated and would have caused a lot of havoc. So the church, in an effort to control the situation, they call him in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they ask him, listen, man, what you're saying there, can you prove this? Can you get that from authority? Now, remember, the church was the authority. Yeah, back then, yeah. They were in charge. Mm -hmm. So anything you, you said and did contrary to the church was a problem. So they had to deal with Martin Luther as swiftly as they could. And so hmm. when they called him into question, to silence him. after <laughs> all was said and done, that was his stand. Mm -hmm. I will not recant. Mm. <laughs> and, it, and, and that song, just like a situation that is well known in the Bible, Daniel, well, the three Hebrew boys, when they were asked uh, to, when they were given another chance to bow and they did not, but they decided to stand. Now, I just want our online viewers to know that there are situations that you'll be placed in, situations where you're asked to, to make a stand for Christ, and it's either you stand for him or you don't. Mm -hmm. Some of us will be placed in, de in dens. Some of us will be placed on, on, on the stake to be burned because back then, people were uh, uh, sacrificed, people were killed, people were burned at the stake. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Martin Luther could have lost his life, but he, in spite of that, Martin Luther decided to stand for what is right. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's very important as we come down to the end of time, we will be only be able to stand as a result of our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that we fortify our mind with the word of God. So when we find ourselves in these situations, we can stand firm for what the word of God says. You know that song I have heard of Christians long ago who were brought before? Yes. Is the tyrant show? Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. were told that he would spare the land mm. if they would renounce the name of Christ. But yeah. one by one, they chose to die. Mm. For the Son of God, they would not deny. And of course, just as history Repe yeah, yeah, says yeah, yeah. it, it will be repeated it one day. Definitely. And uh, we would have to stand mm. for what we believe and whether we would accept what is being said now or not. It doesn't change what will be. And so, based on the word of God, we will one day be called into question. Definitely. And we would have to stand and defend our faith. Mm. We would be called whether or not to accept the teachings of a system or to continue believing in thus said the word of God. Yes. And so, as the men of all stood, and they refused. They were willing to be burned to the stake and persons who were willing to be eaten by lions mm. and whatever was done to their bodies, they were not mindful of it mm. because they knew that there was something greater, something sweeter Praise in store Lord. for them. I'm encouraging you today yes. that we keep that same mindset. <laughs> yes. And I know that there are some persons who are saying, I'm past I'm weak. Mm. I don't know if I'm going to stand, if I would make it. Mm. But just as Martin Luther said, it is not in the flesh. The truth is, in the flesh, is weak. Definitely. But in Christ, it is in Christ that we are able to overcome. It is in Christ that we are able to receive the power necessary mm. to stand true. like these reformers were able to stand. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. At this moment, we just want to take a break and we want to have a special music by our dear sister. So even as the music has been played, you can share your comments, continue to like and share the page as we continue our wonderful discussion. So we're going to take a break at this moment. Every road I walked had led to nowhere And 
And everything I tried had turned out wrong It seemed I lost my reason To get up every morning For I had lost all hope And lost my song Circumstances said I will not make it but that was all before I met the man. Thank you, Jesus. He put his arms around me. I heard him say, forgiven. And I knew I'll never be the same again. Then and there, settled and done. Then and there. Good, uh, good morning again, and we thank you so much for being with us through our amazing discussion. We thank you for the comments. We thank you for the questions. We thank you for sharing and liking the page. As we continue our discussion under the topic, uh, the, the Protestant Reformation characters and contribution, we just want to move quickly into our another question. Uh, and we're looking at what was the Roman church response to the Reformation? What was the Roman church response to the Reformation. All right. So we had the Diet of Worms where Martin Luther was called into question. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we had the excommunication of Martin Luther also. So we, yes. can't, we can't leave that out. No, sir. He became insignificant. <laughs> yes. And uh, that was a strategy used by the church. So what they did, they discredited Martin Luther, mm -hmm. and they, they made him a heretic. Yeah. <laughs> so they published him as one who went contrary mm -hmm. to the mainstream teachings. And so your question to us is, what else mm -hmm. did the church do? Because that was not sufficient. Because remember, words have meaning, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, movement of change 
was taking place. Yeah, yeah. And so we also had the Council of Trent where meetings were held mm -hmm. in discussion so that they could have had what we call a counter-reformation. Reformation. And uh, the main objective was to gain, to regain all those territories that were lost to what we call Christendom and other teachings mm -hmm. contrary mm -hmm. to what was being taught by the Roman Catholic system. Mm -hmm. And so within that establishment, mm -hmm. we also have coming out there what is called the Jesuits. Wow. I know that yeah, yeah. many persons would have heard that word before. That's a big it word. sounds like an old word founded in 1534 by the Spanish noble Ignatius. And uh, listen to them. It says that they were totally Narian hmm. or an institution that was co considered a totalitarianism, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big words, I'm fighting <laughs> to pronounce them. Demanding complete obedience to an infallible church and an infallible pope. Their constitution demanded the rejection of all opposing opinion or judgment, including their own. So in other words, these priests, the society mm. of priests, these were men, it was like a military arm mm. within the ecclesiastical power that was designed to protect the doctrines and the system and of the church. The church. Yeah. So they felt as though and they believed that they were acting on behalf of supreme authority. Mm -hmm. And just as Martin Luther and the other reformers were willing to die, these men were also willing to die for what they believe standing mm. for the church. Hmm. And so whatever they were asked to do, even if it was to slay, they were willing to do that in the name of the, the church, church just to preserve the doctrine and the legacy of the church. Oh, Lord of mercy. Pastor Charles, you yes. want to add to what Pastor... Yeah, just, just to add. Uh -huh. um, just to reiterate, um, we know that Martin Luther, he said it clearly. Therefore, the scripture is... Is in his own light, it is good as scripture interprets itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, interpret itself. At the Diet of Worms, 1521, Luther affirmed that he did not accept the authority of popes and councils, mm -hmm. for they have contradicted each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, unless he was convicted by scripture and plainly reason, he will never recant his views. Yes, so the um, Martin Luther did not um, believe in the in the doctrines. There was um, contradiction. Yes, um, and we know that as Christians, we need not to contradict, contradict, contradict the word of God. Exactly. Um, but we need to um, stand for what we believe. Mm -hmm. um, thus said the Lord. And so what was the Roman church response to the Reformation? Yeah. Um, I have here that during the Protestant Reformation, many concerned Catholics mm -hmm. worked to revive the spiritual nature of the church. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they... They, they work um, to bring about that reformation, to reform the abuses of the clergy and the, and the counter the growth of the Protestantism. Um, Paul III, or Pope, from 1534 to 1549, realized the need for reform, the need for transformation, yes, that renewal in, in, in the church. Also, um, alarmed by the spread of Protestantism, the church initiated a number of reforms and actions to hmm. strengthen and spread the Catholic religion. Hmm. Also, um, just to add again, the Council of Trent, um, which begins from 1545 to 1563. Yes, um, we have formed Catholic beliefs and Protestant ideas. Um, we see here that the Council we, we stated that humans could interpret the Bible and that both faith and good works were necessary for salvation. So they oh. believe in, in, in faith and good works were necessary for salvation. But we know that by, by grace, Ephesians 6 verse 2, by grace we mm. are saved through faith. Mm -hmm. Yet not ourselves, but it's the gift of God. Okay. The council also enacted uh, reforms that cleanse the church of its many weaknesses. Mm. The selling of indulgences. Yes. Um, also, um, Paul attempted to control or to enact controls over the church finances 
so that monetary abuses could be eradicated. Remember, there were um, many were paying for for the sins in order to receive forgiveness. Yes, but we can simply. The Bible says in First John, um, one nine, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we do not have to pay for sins, but we go to God for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. In the face of attacks, some members of the church resorted to harsh methods to defend the faith and to stop the spread of Protestantism. Yes? And so all that was some of the, these were some of the response of the, of the Roman church in, in, in response to the um, Protestant Reformation. And let me also mm -hmm. look to the fact that the church is largely based on traditions and not on the biblical principles of the Bible, of God's word, or the Bible. And uh, during Martin Luther's protest and uh, what came about after mm -hmm. says that they were leading persons away from tradition. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is power in tradition hmm. because your tradition becomes your custom. Yeah. It becomes your norm. Mm -hmm. It is etched in the brain. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is why some persons would say, I was born in that religion so I and stay. I would die in that religion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, they do not even understand what the religion is teaching, mm -hmm. and some of them, frankly, never even went into the church, mm -hmm. except probably when they were baptized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, tradition is dangerous, and uh, Martin Luther recognized that, and so he was leading persons away from tradition by helping them to recognize that it is through Christ. So the Counter-Reformation had to address that issue. Yeah, yeah. So now we had also the Jesuits and the other persons involved. They were now seeking to re-educate persons. Of the tradition. And to bring <laughs> them back into the traditional Mercy. mode. Mercy. And that is why they are so keen on giving them your child from ages one mm -hmm. to seven. Mm -hmm. Because they know that in those years there, mm -hmm. the mind is receptive and the mind is willing to accept. In those years, the children are really unable to question exactly. what they are given. They just receive it. And so they use strategies like these to bring back tradition into not just churches but into the lives of mm, individuals poor. and that is why even today it is so challenging challenging to break that whole concept of tradition mm -hmm. and persons are so keen to accepting tradition that we have placed custom and culture Over. above the word of god that is how deep tradition and custom they run mm -hmm. to infiltrate and seek to dominate the life, the religious perspective of individuals and carry them away from the truth of God's word. Th thank you so much, Pastor, Pastor Lyons and even Pastor Charles for, for educating us in relation to um, the question that was asked, what was the church response to the Reformation? And we are seeing here that whenever... Um, God is about to do something. Satan always comes in with something to counteract what God may have started. So what we are seeing here, we are seeing a fake reformation. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing Martin Luther storing up the true reformation, which is to go back to the word rather than fixing on tradition and customs. And when that occurred, we see that the church the Catholic Church placed a system to bring back the tradition. So we are seeing a tug and pull, but the saints of God need to understand that wherever there is truth, there is always error. Mm -hmm. 
But we as a people, we need to go back in the word and base our faith on the truth in the word. Mm -hmm. You know? And Pastor, the word says, come out of her. Yeah, yeah. My people, mm -hmm. come out of her. And if you look at the Reformation and the, the names that you, you mentioned, Knox and, and Swindley and mm -hmm. Martin Luther and John Calvin, these men, they were influential in their own sphere of life. True. And uh, different churches came out of those protests, that period of reformation, mm -hmm. they changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, can we recognize that they came out of mm -hmm. one system? Yeah. So it is one system that created the challenge, and they still stand dominant, yeah. even in these times, mm -hmm. though they may appear to be sleeping. Yeah. But the churches came out of, so when we see all those different denominations and we wonder where they came from, some of them actually stem from the Reformation period and protesting mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. that system that of tradition system. and exactly. a man-based religious thought and practice as opposed to a theological, a God-centered, monotheistic <laughs> teaching and system of worship and praise and thanksgiving. Definitely. So we as human beings must recognize that there will come a time again when we'll have to Make apply yeah, yeah. and he that uh -huh, call that uh -huh. says, come, come out, out of, of all yeah, yeah. my people and be separate mm. because to be Part of means also to be part of a system of corruption, error. a system of chaos, mm -hmm. a system of mm -hmm. error. And Martin Luther, could you imagine Martin Luther was part of the system, but through the convicting power of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, he was able to come out. Yes, he recognized that the teachings were not of, of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so he was led to, to move. And so, for some persons, they held in their seat, hmm. they held in tradition, they held in one form, in a religious perspective. But even God is saying to somebody today, "Come on now, it's time to move." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are so happy that we we serve a God that is plenteous in grace, mm -hmm. and in spite of our bad behaviors or the things that we may have done in the past, because Martin Luther used to. Uh, practice the same kind of things that that system is teaching now, but because of the, the strength that was given to him through the Spirit of God, he was able to come out, as Pastor rightly said, and stand up for Christ. And we are saying that with the help of Christ, you as well can stand up for Jesus. Uh, and Pastor Charles, I mean, if you recognize, what we see here is also the great controversy at play. Yeah. Yes. It, yeah. Is, it is, yes, we see man in the forefront, but in the background, it is really spiritual yeah, powers yeah, yeah, at yeah, play. Yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, it's yeah. a religious exactly, system. Exactly. And it's all about worship. Mm -hmm. It's about homage. It's about who do you give your obedience to. Ooh, definitely. And that stem all from heaven for Lucifer was jealous that the father said, let us, he called Jesus into play and say, mm -hmm. let us. Why? Could it not have been him? Yeah. Why Jesus and not, why the son and not him? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that led, we had the great controversy. The Bible says there was war in heaven and he was cast out. And even today, he still uses systems and individuals to carry out his Purpose. attitude mm -hmm. of defiance and disobedience to the law and will of God. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, Pastor, sir. you want to say yes. something before we move on? Yes, um, just to add, um, it's very important, but we know that Martin Luther um, is based on sola scriptura, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we, um, we believe in what the Word of God says. Definitely. The Holy Bible. He has the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Bible says in, in John 14, verse 12, around there, if, we, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? And so we believe in the Ten Commandments, and yes, you know, there are some who only uh, cling to nine. And so it's very important that we, 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 we follow um, what God says and not what man says. Yeah. It's not about tradition, but it's by 
is by what God says. And Definitely. it's very, very important to follow that. Thank yeah. you so much, guys. Uh, what a powerful response that we have received so far. As we continue our discussion, we want to look at this question which says, can you please explain the term indulgences? How was it connected to the Reformation? Can you please explain the term indulgences? And we've been speaking about indulgences uh, earlier in the program, but what is the meaning of indulgences and how it is connected to the Reformation? Well, I, I have a, um, a definition here, and I would like to read it. Yeah. Um, the word indulgences, it means the sale of indulgences was a practice where the church acknowledged a donation or other charitable work with a piece of paper um, that satisfied that your soul will enter heaven mm. more quickly by reducing your time in purgatory. Mm. If you committed no serious sins that guaranteed your place in hell and you died before repenting mm. and atoning for mm. all your sins, then your soul went to purgatory. A kind of way station where you finish atoning for your sins before being allowed um, to enter heaven. Mm. Yes, so, but we know that the Bible says, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, God is faithful and just to forgive, to forgive us from all our sins. And so, back then, yes, but we know Martin Luther is stood for what is right. And we see here that back then, um, some of the people, they pay um, to receive forgiveness mm. for their sins. Yes, and we know that Martin Luther he stood against um, this practice mm. and other practices. Yes, um, Martin Luther, he did not um, believe in that, that, the, that people should be paying for their sins. Yes, and so all these things uh, Martin Luther was against. Yes, so we, we do not believe in that. We believe that we confess our sins and God is faithful and just to forgive us. So we, we do not have to pay. We do not have to go and we do not believe that it says, indulgences, if we committed no serious sins that guaranteed your place in heaven and you died before repenting and atoning for your sins, then your soul went to purgatory, whereby you, you, um, you receive that forgiveness, yes, um, before you enter heaven. Wow. Well, could he believe, <laughs> Pastor Lance, this is a serious thing. Mm -hmm. Could he believe when me as a poor man, if I didn't have money, will I do? I can't pee. But the song says salvation. If salvation was a thing that money could buy, mm -hmm. the rich would live and the poor would die. But we are so happy today that we serve a God that we don't have to purchase our salvation. Mm -hmm. He have already purchased it with, it, with, our, with his own life. Mm -hmm. So we just have to ask God for, as Pastor Charles says, to forgive us. And he would grant us that forgiveness and give us the strength to walk on that narrow path. Mm -hmm. But when you think about what was happening then, Pastor? It mm. was seriousness. Yeah. And of course, the connection between the indulgences and the Reformation mm -hmm. comes to Martin Luther and the 95 Theses is, exactly. that he nailed to the church in Wittenberg. And those 95 Theses or points were areas that the church itself would have been going contrary in reference to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so, even with the fact of the indulgences, it speaks really of works rather than faith, faith yeah. in Jesus Christ. Exactly. And when the dust is settled, that is what it is. It's about whether it's about faith in Christ or it is about works. And to go even further, Martin Luther express the thought that it is not about just faith but yes your faith must also be accompany your lifestyle yeah, in yeah, my must own have words mm -hmm. must be evident mm -hmm. of your belief and your recanting of what you would have done in times past or your forgiveness or asking god to cleanse you recanting from what you used to do and the bad things and so on, the change that you want, your lifestyle. So I do not do it to be saved. No. But I do it because I'm saved. I am saved. Definitely. So it is it is not the works that I do. It's it's really nothing about me. me. Anymore. It's really about Christ, Christ and what Christ did mm -hmm. for me. So exactly. my faith is based in 
crisis act on my behalf because I could, have, I could not have done it. It's only the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that could have done that for me. And uh, just to bring the situation into perspective, look at this. Fear. Fear is a great weapon mm -hmm. of Satan. Fear. And uh, if I believe that you have the power to cause me to go to heaven or hell, then I am indebted to you. Definitely. Because my belief is you alone, you alone could save me. Yeah, yeah. And that is what the church would have done. Place persons in a pedestal of fear, yeah. a prison of fear, so that they believe that that is the only way they could get salvation. Hmm. And whatever the church says to do, they will do it because nobody wants to go to hell. Wow. And that in itself shows you the corrupt nature of, of the system. The system yeah. Because it was not one that was sincere and noble, but one that was corrupt, desiring personal gain and establishing a structure of man that mm. is discredited by the word of God. Definitely. Thank you so much, Pastor. And right here we are seeing the connection between indulgences and the Reformation. Indulgences basically was based on uh, buying certain things, buying your salvation. But the Reformation stemmed from the fact that we are saved by faith to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall be justified by faith and faith only. And as you rightly says, um, when we have faith in God, not faith and works, but faith works. So once, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wha once you have faith in God, it's not about faith and work, but it's faith works. Okay. There would be actions, mm -hmm. but it's not because you want to be saved, but because you are already saved by the blood okay. of Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. At this moment, you just want to take one more break. We, wa we, wa we want to have a promotion at this moment. And as we have the promotion, I, I want you to continue to share. We are seeing your comments. We are seeing your questions. And we are so grateful for all that you have been sharing. But at this moment, we're going to take another break as we look at this promotion. And then we're going to be back to conclude. thank you again so much for being with us and we thank you for all what you have been doing uh, by participating in our discussion this morning and as we come down to the end we still wanted to participate we still wanted to share and like the page i'm so happy that i have some educated young men with me that was making the discussion so excited and so in-depth and as we come down to an end i just want to ask this last two question first i want to ask was the Reformation a success or a failure? Well, for me, I would say yes. The, the Reformation was a success. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it was a success indeed. And just learning from the life of Martin Luther, John Calvin, Zwingli, and all these guys. Indeed, I, I must say it was a success. They stood for what, is, uh, what was right, yes, um, in what they believed. And they had a strong belief in God. 
Um, let me say, by, let me add to that by saying that Luther, his main focus or his chief focus um, it was to refocus the mission of the church by distilling a clear message about grace in a way that was understood and received in the heart. Mm -hmm. Yes? So Martin Luther, Romans 1, I think verse 12, um, the just shall live by faith. Yeah. Yes? And also the Bible says, for by grace we are saved through faith. Mm -hmm. Yes? So Martin Luther, he strong belief in, in, in the message about grace. He preached about a direct encounter um, with God and preach in a way that expected listeners to experience um, the Lord directly. Mm -hmm. So Martin Luther preached in a way that would cause many to understand um, God's message, yes? And so that they can accept it. Because we know that back then, yes, um, they, they had a strange beliefs, yes? And so Martin Luther was preaching in a way so that the people can listen well and understand and seek to accept the message. Mm -hmm. At the heart of the success of the Protestant Reformation was its bold and clear proclamation of Christ. So indeed, it was a success. Yeah. Yes, Martin Luther was proclaiming Jesus Christ. Thus said the Lord, was proclaiming truth. So at the end, the Reformation was successful. Wonderful. Pastor Alliance, do you have anything to say? Was and for successful? me, well, 2017 uh -huh. marked 500 years since Martin Luther would have disseminated the 95 Theses. Yeah. And uh, it says that even now, in recent times, you hear the systems of the day stating that the protest is over. Hmm. Now, there must be a reason why they are saying that the protest is over. Hmm. And that shows the significance of what took place, well, 2017 said 500 years ago. Mm -hmm. That shows the significance. So it means that it would have left an impression hmm. upon the system at that time fighting against indulgences, a protest against indulgences and the reformation, yeah. the change that came about. So 500 result. years after, we are saying it still stands significant. Yeah. So yeah. if you ask me if it was successful, I would say yes. And look at the PowerPoint now. Hmm. Come on. The Seventh-day Adventist church is still here. Yeah. yeah. And there are still other churches that are standing against indulgences mm -hmm. and the teachings of the Roman system of that day yeah. and even of today. Yeah. And so we are saying the protest is not over and the protest will never be over yeah, exactly. as long as men seek to go contrary to the word of God because I'm confident that this church would not go against the principles of God's word in this regard especially. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Pastor Charles and Pastor Lyons, for that profound answer. And I firmly believe that the Reformation was a success. And as Pastor said, it is even being applied even today in our day and age. So the final question is, would you agree with the statement, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, is it indebted to Martin Luther? Okay. Is it indebted to Martin Luther? Would you agree with this statement? All right. Well, of course, we say thank God for the contributions of Martin Luther and the way in which the Holy Spirit was able to use him mm -hmm. and to interfere with his intellectual capacity, if you please. Definitely. And to massage the brain yeah. cells yeah, 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 and, yeah. and to bring about some scholasticism, mm -hmm. some scholarship, <laughs> if you please, <laughs> yeah. so that he would be able to go deep in the word of God and study and to be able to recognize that it is grace mm -hmm. through faith. And of course, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, righteousness by faith, yeah. Justification by faith, mm -hmm. the sanctuary doctrine, mm -hmm. salvation, all those are part of the teachings, prominent teachings of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah. So, of course, we appreciate exactly. what the Holy Spirit did 
in the life of, of Martin Luther. Definitely. And of course, we thank God that even today, we can look back and see the fire that burned mm -hmm. within them. Mm -hmm. And it is that same passion, desire, and fire that must burn within the men and women of God. That's why we must study the word. Come on now. Rightly divide the word of truth. Not only standing on what they say, mm. what is said from the altar, but you study for yourself. Yeah. Nothing is wrong in studying for yourself. Yeah, yeah. And that is one of the tricks that the, the system of the day use also, so that the word could have only been Red. interpreted by, by a, a, a specific group of <laughs> yeah, individuals. Yeah. But Martin Luther decided, you know what? The New Testament, I'm going to translate it into German so that the common man could read would it. be able to understand. Yeah. And when you bring knowledge to people, knowledge with wisdom. You know what happens? Persons, well, of course, wisdom, you get smart. Yeah. And you'll be able to discern right from wrong. And that is what they were hiding from the people. So we thank God that truth was able to stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. Even though gross darkness existed during that period, light, that's the power of truth, you know. Yeah. Truth brings light. Yeah. And truth dispels that light. It dispels darkness. Definitely. So that even today, we can stand the light of the word of God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pastor yes, Charles. Indeed, uh, just to add, um, indeed, um, I thank God for the for the contribution of, of Martin Luther uh, and what he did back then, even John Calvin and others. Yes. And indeed we can learn a lot from from the life of Martin Luther. Yes. And so I, I want to encourage um, somebody put up, study to show thyself a proof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Indeed. So we need to study to show thyself a proof unto God. And I will encourage um, people to study the word of God. Study to show thyself a proof. Yes. Ask God to, to, to help you to understand his scriptures, both the old and the new um, testament. Yes. Indeed, we can, we can learn a lot from, from Martin Luther, from the Protestant Reformation. Yes, um, we can learn so many things from it. Yes, and, and we know that Martin Luther, he stood for, for truth. Yes, he stood for principle. Yes, we can learn a lot from that. Um, he, they, they tried to, um, to, to allow him to, to recant, to change his mind on, on what he believed. But Martin Luther, he did not recant what he stood for, for what he believed. And so we need to stand for for what we believe, thus said the Lord. Yes, all and the New Testament, the Ten Commandments, thus said the Lord. Amen. Yes, Amen. and we know that we can, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us from all our sins. We, we need not to go and pay uh, to receive forgiveness. Yes, but we can go boldly to the throne of grace, mm -hmm. whereby we can obtain mercy. So there's a lot we can learn from the life of Martin Luther from the ref reformers. And so, but I encourage persons to study the word of God. Yeah. Ask God to allow the Holy Spirit to help you to understand the scriptures and God will help you. Mm -hmm. Thank and you pastor, so much. Please allow me that last point mm -hmm. that we don't go to man when it comes to sins. Yeah. We can't go to man because the problem is we all sinners yeah. and man we are not infallible exactly we can err we can make mistakes so i cannot go to another sinner to receive forgiveness True. forgiveness can only come from, from. from one who cannot sin yeah. the one who died for me Definitely. and that is jesus christ when it comes to forgiveness we don't bow to man we bow, we bend our knees in the presence of God and we ask him to forgive us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor Charles. Thank you so much, Pastor Lyons, for joining us today. Thank you so much, viewers, uh, for being with us. We thank you so much for your comments. We thank you for your, your questions. We thank you for all what you have done. And I just want to let the online viewers know that it doesn't matter who you are or where you came from. As a matter of fact, when you look at the reformers, you would understand that these men were humble men, but they were willing to surrender they all and to work for the cause of God. And so you as well can be a reformer by standing up for what is right and allowing the Spirit of God to use you for his glory. We just want to encourage you to continue to join us on Friday for Youth Live and even our Sabbath program and even our Sunday program that starts at 7 and our Sabbath program that starts at 9 a.m. and even our 
Youth Live that starts at 6.30 or 7. If you want you to continue to join us and continue to do the same thing that you have been doing for the past few months. And we just want to thank you again openly for all what you have done for us. And may the Lord continue to bless you as we wait on his second coming. I just want to ask Pastor Lance to do a, a closing prayer for us as we say goodbye today. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, our Father. A bulwark never failing. We thank you, Lord, for standing with us and standing for us. We know, Lord, nothing good have we done to deserve the privilege of your presence in our lives, but only because of your love, we are able to bask in the ambience of your glory and of your grace. We say thank you, Lord, for the way in which you use reformers. We say thank you that even today, the protest continues against the system of man so that we, dear God, can exalt the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray, Father, that every man, every woman, every boy, every girl in the hearing of my voice today and those that would hear even after would make a conscious decision, come what may, they would stand with Jesus and the principles of his word. Yes, we pray that God that fear would not cause us to recant, but Lord, we would know that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. And so help us, Lord, to stand in these evil days and when we are called, help us to stand for the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayers. And help us, Lord, to be true to you, to trust in you, even in these chaotic times. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen.